little 10 year old daughter who was at the party, did the whole obstacle course with us, says to her, mommy, do you know who you married? He'll be fine. None of us even knew it happened to him. He didn't even say ow when it happened. He just acted like nothing happened. No one there knew anything had occurred to my arm. She's like, do you know who you married? Now think about that. That someone, your kid, your daughter thinks that highly of you and has that much thought of how you're capable of dealing with stuff. It makes it so easy to not give a about a rip muscle. Oh. What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. And today's going to be a quick, dark, and dirty one. Today, we are talking about dealing with adversity, dealing with hardship, setbacks. And we've, we've talked about in the past about dealing with failure and misfortune and suffering and things like that. But today is, is taking it to a different level, especially when it comes to injuries. And, and it's such a great way to set an example of how to deal with adversity when you have to deal with injuries and setbacks, especially when you are addicted to fitness like the freak families. So that's what today's episode of the Steve Agger Show podcast is going to be all about. And it's because, well, look at this guy. Producer Tyson made me put this little bobblehead guy in here. And look at his arms. His arms are pretty even. He is a ripped, jacked, big-headed, bald dude. I don't know if you can even see it. I think you can see this guy in there. Tyson made me put that in there for this episode or maybe we're going to keep it there forever. I don't know, for all the episodes. But just this weekend at Tyson's birthday party, I tore the bicep, literally the tendon right here off the bone. Like I think you can see on the camera, this arm, you see a bicep moving up and down when it's flexing. This one, it just dangles down to the side because there is no longer an attachment right here. It's completely detached and ruptured. And here's what happened. So I was, I was doing a rope climb and, and forget about the reasons why it happened. Like, yeah, well, you can go back and reflect and try to uh, prevent stuff from happening. We'll get into that in a second. But I heard this, I was just doing some, some training on a rope, some, some crazy plyometric rope climbing stuff that I've done many times before. And my hands were right here on the rope on both two, two separate ropes. So it's right next to my ear and the sound like makes you sick to your stomach hearing the sound. It was like, think of a, a head of lettuce starting to just rip apart, like ripping apart. Or think of a battle rope just being tugged and snapping apart and then followed by a, a pop. And that's exactly what happened. The second it happened, I, I, luckily I was only two or three feet off the ground, four feet off the ground. So I landed on my feet because you're falling down from that, from that length. Bicep completely torn. And I know it's torn. And so this, this is what we're going to talk about. This is how we're going to use this as an example about how to properly deal with setbacks, adversity, misfortune, whatever you want to call it. And we, we, we reference a lot of times stoicism on this, on this podcast. So Seneca says, to bear trials with a calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. And that's what you have to do. Literally, Tyson was re recording an Instagram story of me doing this exercise. It was at the end of our workout. We did a full obstacle course. This was just one 10 second clip I was going to record. And so it Two seconds into it, I literally dropped down onto my feet. And he's like, do you want me to still post that? We're like, no, don't post it. Wish we, wish we would have kept the recording to see exactly how the injury happened. But he just deleted it and we moved on. I dropped down and just walked it off, walked away like nothing happened. Because it's at his birthday party. I don't want to cause a big scene or whatever else. I don't need to take any attention or ruin his party or anything like that. So I have this bicep that's just dangling down that was just ripped off the freaking bone. And... When he was, he was still in the middle of his own circuit. So I took him aside like five minutes later and I told him exactly what happened because I know he can deal with it. I know it's not going to ruin his birthday, but so that he can like help me when I need to lift up the big heavy coolers to get into the car because this one arm wouldn't work exactly functioning the way it should be. I could still move it around and stuff. But so I told him because I know he can handle it. But then we get 
into the, uh, so I didn't tell anyone else. No one else really I told a couple of guys towards the end of the, the party that I screwed up my bicep on there and they're like, oh, holy shit, I could see it. Now that you mentioned it, it's like all, all the way up here and there's just nothing here. It's just mush here where there's supposed to be tendons that feel like a, a tree branch in there. And so we're on the car ride home and I finally tell my wife to rush in and tell my daughter, Midge, and of course the, the Russian freaks out and starts like, panicking and crying and feeling so bad like I'm fine with it and that's why I didn't bring it up at the party so it didn't cause a big scene or anything like that and they're like Tyson's like why what are, why are you crying and Mitch is like why are you crying and then she's like oh I, he he's needs to be the the leader of the family and it needs to be strong and I don't I don't whatever and because I have, so I have to deal with it so she feels bad and she's crying and that's just the way women are sometimes Midge, little 10 year old daughter who was at the party did the whole obstacle course with us says to her mommy do you know who you married he'll be fine none of us even knew it happened to him he didn't even say ow when it happened he just acted like nothing happened no one there knew anything had occurred to my arm she's like do you know who you married now think about that that's someone your kid your daughter thinks that highly of you and has that much thought of how you're capable of dealing with stuff, it makes it so easy to not give a shit about a ripped muscle. Oh no, my muscle, if I don't get surgery, my muscle is going to be deformed or is going to be weeks that I, I can't, I have, a, have to have a, whatever, a cast or in a sling and I can't use it. And I'm going to lose some muscle in that arm and, and this and that. And I can't do certain exercise and you can't sweat. You can't go in the sauna or the pool for a few weeks and we're in the middle of summer. Boo fucking who, poor little you, little bitch boy. When you have a daughter that's saying, do you know who you married? He'll be fine. Like just right off the bat, knowing nothing about tears or surgeries or what rehabilitation looks like, it doesn't even matter in her mind. Daddy will be fine. Daddy kid, this is, this will be nothing for him. And she, she's right. The next day we were right back at it. We were working out the next day. We worked out again yesterday. We did some strength training, obviously on the strength stuff. I'm doing just single arm. Today I was doing hill intervals on the on the treadmill, do an airdyne bike with just the one arm. Still tons of cardio to do. You still have 95% left of your body to use. But the point is, knowing it, when you know you have eyeballs on you, when you're just living your life, and then you try to start feeling down and feeling sorry for yourself and not, not appreciating or having gratitude for what you have and where you are and the people around you, Makes it easy to deal with shit when you know those eyeballs are on you. George, George Patton, General Patton said, you are always on parade as a leader. Meaning, there's always people watching your conduct, how you're operating, your men, your people, your family, your kids are always freaking watching how you're operating. How are you dealing with shit? And they are especially watching extra closely to see how you deal with suffering, with misfortune, with hardships, with adversity, with ripped fucking muscles off of the bone. They're seeing how are you going to deal with this? And this is your chance. Like it's a, it's a, you have to always look at the bright side. Look at the upside of these things. Like luckily I was only four feet up. This thing went up to 12, 15 feet high. So imagine it happened way up at the top and all my body weight came crashing down to the ground. Could have broken ankle, broken a leg, landed weird. Who knows? You could break your spine and snap your neck who knows what the hell could happen then i'm laying on the floor and can't even move talk about ruining a birthday party so thank god it only happened four feet off the ground and i was able to land on my own feet like thank god it was also only one arm could have been both of them at the same time now you have two fucked up arms so you don't even have one arm to deal with and do other shit could always be a lot freaking worse also luckily it happened to me and not someone else that was there that maybe wouldn't deal with it as well. Luckily, it didn't happen to my kids. So now they could see me going through something and use this as a chance to demonstrate how to stay calm under pressure, how to not freak the fuck out when shit doesn't go your way or when you get injured and you have a freak injury, even something that is is supposed to be painful. And it's now just knowing immediately this is months, like it'll be months before I'm able to do a pull-up again, which I love doing pull-ups, do them all the time, months till I could do it. Boxing, not happening with that arm. Definitely not any jujitsu anytime soon, as we're always trying to get back into that. So all that could be like, oh, 
down and, and, and depressed and, and whatever else and feeling sorry for yourself and all the bullshit self-talk and stories you tell yourself in the head makes it so easy knowing what people think about you, what, what support you have and what eyeballs are on you makes it fucking easy when you start thinking about that. And we're, we're, re, we're currently, we just finished watching the, the third season of the Wu-Tang Clan series on Hulu. If you didn't watch that and you know anything about the Wu-Tang Clan, if you don't know about the Wu-Tang Clan, I don't know how, are you even an American, but awesome series and talk about adversity. Literally every episode, every step of the way in their lives, in their childhood, in adulthood, in their careers, even after success and millions of dollars, the, the, the misfortune didn't end. And Seneca, another stoic quote, says, misfortune is virtue's opportunity. This is like this injury or these things that go or happen in their career in the Wu-Tang Clan or, or different court case they had and they were getting arrested and all kinds of street shit going on. But this, this ripped bicep is a chance to demonstrate how to deal with adversity, how to deal with an injury. So hopefully it doesn't happen. But one day if my kids had an injury or needed some kind of surgery or some kind of medical procedure or something, they can at least have an example of how to deal with this shit, how to look at this stuff, how to not freak out, how to realize it's just a temporary thing, that it's going to be fine. You're not the first, you're not the last. It's a freaking arm. It's one arm, still 95% of my body. I was literally in the gym the next freaking day and showing them how to deal with misfortune. And then thinking of uh, stress, who cares about whether I get surgery, not surgery. I've gone back and forth in the last couple of days, whether I was going to, I saw it as a, a kind of a cool idea of a challenge to be able to build the strength back up without even having any tendons attached. And yeah, it would look a little deformed, but I would be able to do it with no surgery. And then I've went, now I'm into the idea that I should have surgery so I can get full functionality back and whatever else, even though it's going to make me maybe not be able to train the way I want to train for several months. And you, who knows what way is going to be better and, and you sit and you analyze shit for days and weeks and you, you don't know what to do because it's a tough situation and you're dealing with the, the adversity and the failure and, and, the, and the fuck ups and whatever else. It really doesn't matter. It matters how you go in and approach these situations. Another stoic quote, Epictetus says, people are not disturbed by things, but by the views they take of them. So it really doesn't matter if I get surgery or don't get surgery. Either one, either one of those is either going to be a massive failure or a massive fucking success based on me and how I approach it, how I attack either one of those scenarios. Both of those scenarios don't matter. I am confident, 100%, that I will be able to deal with either one of those scenarios all out and be totally fine with either one of them. But then I think, all right, which one will be optimal? Which one will get me to where I want to be? Which one is better in the long term? And it's probably going to be the surgery. I haven't even been to the doctor yet, but I know it's going to need, have an option for surgery. And that'll be my decision to make. And, and we'll go from there. But it goes back to a horse story. I think I might've shared on here before the, the old horse story where there's a, a, guy, a guy has a farm and, and he's got all these, all these, no, no horses. He's got no horses and, and the horses are what, what makes them their money on the farm and, and they need them to do the work and whatever else. So all the neighbors are like, oh, that's, that's too bad. You don't have any good quality horses to help you out with any of your work and you're, you're not able to be as successful as you want. You don't have any horses. And he's like, ah, that, that's all right. We'll see. And a, a few weeks later or whatever, he's out in the fields and he comes across a couple of wild horses and he tames them. He shows back home and he's got these awesome horses that are now able to do work for him. And they're the, the people are like, oh, lucky you. You now have all these horses. He said, yeah, well, well, we'll see. And then a couple days later, his son leaves the gate open to the, to the barn and the, all the horses run away and he no longer has any horses. Everyone's like, oh, how, how horrible for you. You don't have these horses anymore. He says, well, we'll see. They go out, look for the horses. His son finds the horses and he's trying to ride them back home. And his son falls off the horse, breaks his leg, talking about injuries, talking about misfortune. How do you deal with it? Don't forget, people are not disturbed by things, but by their views they take of those things. His son falls off the horse and all the people are like, oh, so horrible, feel so bad for you. Your son broke his leg, such misfortune and, and whatever else. And he's like, yeah, we'll see. A couple days later, the army comes into town and recruiting all the young boys to go and group, bring them in to uh, go to battle and go to war. 
and they pass up his son because his son is incapable. He has a, a broken leg. Everyone says, oh, you're so lucky. Your son missed, doesn't have to go to war and, and, and possibly die. You're so lucky. And the father says, yeah, we'll see. Meaning the good, we'll see. The bad, we'll see. Sometimes what you think is good ends up being fucking horrible. And sometimes you think bad becomes a, a fucking blessing in disguise. So who knows what, what, what direction you need to go in. You go with your gut. You go with your intuition. And that's actually a couple episodes from now. We're going to be talking, going deep into decision-making and how to make decisions using your gut, using your intuition. We're going to dive and do a deep freak dive into that stuff. And these are all ways of showing how to deal with adversity. The mindset that it takes to deal with the adversity so that no matter what adversity comes along, it doesn't fucking matter that you're prepared for it. We're going to do a whole separate episode also coming up a week or two from now on how to be prepared, how to be ready for anything. And... Another, another quote, Seneca says, I judge you unfortunate because you have never lived through misfortune. You have passed through life without an opponent. No one can ever know what you're capable of, not even you. So if you're not, and we, and we probably, I think I used that same quote on a, another episode we did on doing hard shit and suffering and adversity from a different angle, like voluntary suffering and voluntary adversity. Like finding out who the fuck you are and what you're made of. You need shit like this in your life, like a rip muscle off the bone to go and show yourself who the fuck you really are, what you're capable of, what you're made of. Show yourself that you have what it takes, so that you still have what it takes, that you're not going to crumble under the pressure, that you are going to be a role model to your, to your kids and show them how to deal with this kind of adversity. And we don't take any days off in the gym. I didn't even miss days off after this. But as I was weighing in on... To get surgery, not surgery. Actually, if you don't get surgery, you miss less time in the gym. I could go right back in the gym and work hard because I'm just going to start building all the muscles around it and miss no time off. I could go in the sauna, in the pool. You don't have to worry about infections of the cuts and surgery and recovery. If you get surgery, it's a much longer recovery process. I still think I'll be able to work out every day, but knowing that I, I'm a, if I choose a surgery, that I'm going to have to be willing to accept if I need to take a, an easier day of a workout or a not such an intense day that I won't even be able to sweat, that it, is it even going to be considered a workout? We'll see how it goes, but willing to do that and showing that example also that it's, that's not the end of the fucking world because it's a decision making, making the decision of what's going to be the better option of how to deal with this adversity, how to best get through it for the long term, for the long run and showing that, you know what? Say I lose my workout streak of, of not taking a day off. Say I just take a complete day off after having a surgery, which I don't really think I will, but let's just say I decide to. It won't be the end of the fucking world. It's another lesson right there. Guess what I'll start doing? I'll start a new streak the next fucking day. It's not a big deal. I'm not that I'm not gonna be stressed about that. I'm gonna give myself the freedom and the flexibility to make any of those decisions as they come. It's not like I, I'm not going to make a decision to not get surgery and have a deformed bicep just to prove to myself that I can strengthen it up on my own without needing surgery. And the real design factor is to guarantee I wouldn't need to take a day off because I could just work around it and work through it. You don't have to like worry about getting sweat in the, in the, the site of the operation or whatever, where they, where they sliced you open or whatever it is. So Here's what, what I want to finish this episode off with is you're always going to have adversity no matter who the hell you are, no matter what you're doing, you're always going to have adversity. Whether you're broke, you're going to have adversity. If you're rich, there's going to be adversity. There's Look at the Wu-Tang Clan. They had literally the, 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 the saying, mo money, mo problems. They just had bigger, higher level problems when it came to money. But there was always money problems. There was always stress and anxiety and adversity and suffering and hardships that you need to overcome. There was at every level of the game, doesn't matter who the fuck you are, what you do, what level you're at, what your status is or whatever, how much money you make, it doesn't fucking matter. You're always going to have adversity. So why not have some motherfucking fun along the way and approach that adversity, make it your bitch and weaponize it. And these are the exact things that we work on in the Freak Father Alliance, which is a men's mentorship group coaching program where I help entrepreneurial fathers and men to develop a no-excuses mindset so they could build more muscle, make more money, have more meaning, so they could finally start attacking their mission in life to create their ideal 
lifestyle with time, freedom for their families. That's what the Free Father Alliance is all about. And we, we talk about this emotional intelligence and dealing with this adversity and how to overcome the hardships in life, in the mindset, the family, the fitness, and the business on a regular basis. So if you want some information about the Free Father Alliance, let me know. And in the meantime, stop being a little bitch, weaponize your adversity, don't crumble under the pressure, and act the way a man should. And in case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses.